We are all already cyborgs. And I don't mean that in the sense of Terminator-like cyborgs with chips embedded in our bodies or having wires for hair, but I mean that in the sense of how reliant we are on our technology devices to carry out our everyday tasks, uh, be it simple things like setting reminders or more complex things like mediating our conversations and emotions and even helping us find love in today's times. So therefore, any upgrade to these technologies is a direct upgrade and enhancement of, we, of who we are as human beings itself. And in the last five, six years, such advancements have been of a really profound nature with machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, sort of blooming into this, uh, propelling us into this new technological era. And one might wonder what these kinds of advancements have to do for something like creative expression or art, things that we otherwise consider such uh, deeply, innately human endeavors. Um, so to talk about that, uh, let me begin by talking about an incident that took place almost um, four years ago now. So this was uh, between uh, Lee Sedol, one of the best Go players in the world, and uh, uh, an AI developed by Google called AlphaGo. So it was a series of five matches that happened between these two um, champions, basically. So what, what really happened was uh, this guy playing against an AI developed by Google. Uh, and to give you some sense of how complex the game of Go is, the total number of moves possible in the game of Go is much more than the total number of atoms that exist in the universe. And it's a game that people believe uh, relies heavily on ideas of abstraction and intuition, things we don't necessarily associate with machines. But the result of this series of five games was that uh, the AI won the series four is to one. And in some ways, um, AI had achieved a feat that most of the scientists also thought was at least a decade away. While this may sound a bit eerie and sort of uncomforting, uh, one of the key takeaways for me was what Lee Sedol had to say after the matches. He said that by playing an AI, he was able to see new kinds of moves and strategies in the game of Go that he wouldn't have been able to come up with had he just continued playing with other humans. Isn't that beautiful and profound? As we sort of create these new tools and technologies, they in turn are constantly shaping us and molding us to, to sort of experience the world in completely new and unexpected ways and even opening up new kinds of things that we can do. And that is something that I am very interested in in my own work um, in the creative expression domain as to what these new tools of technology mean in terms of making art and being more expressive ourselves. Uh, so I create different kinds of artwork for that. Um, for example, I worked on this piece called a flying pantograph, which is essentially a drone device with uh, a pen attached at the end of it. What happens here is basically um, a person draws something on a, on a table, and this drone acts like this infinitely long arm sort of liberating us from the foundations of our physical body to be able to draw at uh, remote locations and remote canvases. So it's sort of augmenting uh, what our physical uh, sort of capacities are to be able to express beyond uh, just our physical boundaries. And in that sense, art and technology have always sort of coexisted and co-evolved uh, through centuries. One of the prime examples of that being the invention of photography, right? And when photography came about, uh, artists were liberated from just representing the world um, as realistically as possible because cameras could act uh, and do that job now. And um, AI in that sense is, is a path uh, in that evolution. But the profoundness of AI in the arts arises from the fact that instead of it just sort of mimicking like, like my hand as in this drone example or uh, the eyes as in cameras, AI is about mimicking human intelligence and human intellect itself. So therefore it starts to impact things around uh, what creativity means, what intentions and imaginations mean basically. And in some sense, uh, through the technologies of AI, what we're doing is trying to replicate the processes, very roughly speaking, of how our brains work to sort of give lots of input data and pass them through series of neurons and then create outputs at the end of it. And um, in the last three, four years, 
uh, machines have got very good at understanding and perceiving the world around them, being able to recognize thousands of different kinds of things and objects. Um, and I was very curious what this ability of uh, the machine to perceive the world around it means in terms of art. So I created this uh, art system called Tandem, which is essentially a drawing software. Uh, so you begin by sort of doodling and making random sort of gestures. And then you select a personality and hit the imagine button. And there's this AI sitting inside the computer that sort of takes your input intentions and strokes and adds its own um, creative uh, understanding of it to, to create a final output. So for example, um, here uh, a human drew what uh, most of us would think as these lifeless, um, sort of leafless trees in a deserted land, but uh, the AI imagined those to be these dogs with large ears and created very interesting scenery around it. And um, some more examples of that sort of here, basically uh, people drew what would be just straight mundane lines, but an AI sort of imagined these flowers at the intersections of it to create this interesting uh, output. And uh, here again, sort of, so the kind of knowledge that you train the machine on is what it sort of learns. Here it was trained on a collection of human faces, so all it sees is human faces even within like blank inputs, basically. Um, and this is, this work is now part of a permanent exhibition at, uh, at a museum in Germany, which is like this biggest museum of computer science in the world. So I'm very happy that lots of people get to interact with it and I get to see the outputs of those interactions. Um, and in some sense, uh, through these works and sort of the works that I'll discuss in the, in the subsequent slides, is the idea of what human uh, machine creativity continuum is. And this is something that I think is being established through these new uh, unique technological tools, right? Because your traditional paint brushes and uh, tools of art had very deterministic ways of how they would react. But now you're able to train the machine on these large amounts of data so that they're beginning to contribute to the art conversation, not just in, in sort of deterministic ways, but adding their own content and imaginations and aesthetics to the equation. Um, and over the last few years, apart from just being very good at perceiving the world around them, machines have become very good at creating uh, new imagery. So this is a series of fa faces that are all machine generated uh, by a group of researchers at NVIDIA. Uh, so you basically take a series of examples of input images and ask the machine to learn patterns among them and then uh, create outputs through that. So what I do in my art practice is start using tools like these uh, and sort of molding them in how machines learn and how quickly they are learning and so on and so forth to create uh, new artwork. For example, uh, I did this uh, series of works called the Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Algorithm, which is essentially the idea of exposing the machines to the insides of the human body and letting it create its own interpretations of the uh, human hardware. The title of the work is um, an inspiration from one of Rembrandt's earliest paintings called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tulp, where uh, he made that painting in the 1600s at a time of troubled fascination with uh, science, medical science, and sort of people debating whether other humans should be allowed to cut open uh, someone else and work inside them. And in, in that sense, we are at a parallel time with AI and machine learning and our trouble fascination with this technology and how much should uh, uh, humanity should machines be exposed to basically. And this work was shown at uh, the Nature Mod Gallery uh, as part of the Gradient Descent AI art show, which was one of the first shows to happen in a contemporary art gallery of artworks made completely with AI. So in that sense, establishing AI art as, as its own genre. Uh, the next series of works I want to talk about is called Masked Reality. Um, I'm very fascinated with the idea of masks as objects in general, as things that have existed across centuries, across different cultures, and what these allow us to do is to engage with the world from a completely new vantage point, right? They sort of change our identity and uh, 
talk about the malleability of one's identity. And uh, I see a lot of parallels of that with how machine learning and AI works today, especially with all the social media identities that we can have and sort of engage with the world sitting behind those identities. Um, so I create this interactive piece where what happens is basically uh, uh, a person's face is transformed into uh, this. A person's face is basically, as they look into this web camera, a person's face is transformed into face painting rituals of um, um, paintings that are inspired from southern India and cultures of southern India, basically. So um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, uh, AI's involvement and machine learning's involvement that's happening in all kinds of different industries today, right? Um, and very much uh, the creative industries. Uh, but it's very critical for us to also think at this point what uh, the ways in which different large organizations are sort of shaping this up, uh, collecting lots of amounts of data and then influencing our actions in ways that we don't necessarily sort of uh, are aware of every day, right? And so to think about this, I created this conceptual art piece called Authorize, which is uh, this idea of it, it looks like a simple writing machine, like a writing desk, but as you start writing something, uh, the machine which is trained on philosophy books and human handwritings suddenly sort of takes control of your hand to, uh, to continue that writing. So you hold the pen and then the role between you and the machine interchanges where the machine becomes the thinking entity and you become just the mechanical, uh, like a robotic arm executing the thoughts of the machine. And the idea behind this piece is to sort of get people to uh, think about what their relationship with technology today is and how much authority or uh, sense of control do they have and feel when they're actually working with these technological devices because it's up to all of us to sort of come together to shape technologies in ways that are about augmenting our abilities rather than it being decided and controlled for us by some external large entities. Uh, so uh, to, to sort of wrap up this talk and end this conversation, I'd like to address this thought of uh, a lot of people think that if machines are able to create art and if they're able to create soundtracks or texts that are interesting and novel, does that mean the end of the road for the involvement of humans in the art, right? But I, I don't think that that is the case because uh, it's very necessary to look at these two things separately. The ability for machines to create content and this inherent sort of innate desire of humans to, to be creatively expressive. And that will continue to happen irrespective of the ability of machines to create. And that is the kind of work that I am interested in, in seeing how these technological advancements can be used to augment human creativity and create new universes of expression rather than uh, sort of using AI to, uh, to kill or um, uh, to restrict human uh, creativity and intentions. And that's what my journey as an AI artist is all about. Thank you.